Welcome back to our series, the fourth of five of the complete guide to remote work. In our previous video, hiring and managing remote employees, we took the side of the companies and went over the steps and processes involved in hiring and managing remote employees. This time we'll be doing the same, taking the side of the companies again and going over all that's involved in remote team management, because management styles must change when the teams are no longer physically present. We assure you that it's not all that scary. So before we start, here's a quote to motivate you from Tiffany Knapper, a creative director and entrepreneur who finds remote workers to be easy to manage. Remote workers have proven to be more reliable, more motivated, and more appreciative of my management style, which is less time spent hovering over shoulders, or in our case, less time in calls and virtual meetings, and more time spent doing the work. Using Tiffany Knapper's example, a good reason for why her remote workers are so reliable and motivated is that they mesh well together. How they got there most likely has to do with their culture. Sometimes that develops fastest when encouraged by managers. Interestingly, some managers don't believe that this is possible at all, but believe us, it is, as we're about to see. We'll start with the first of three things that helps develop this culture, having certain idiosyncrasies. In layman's terms, each team develops their own unique tradition of how they communicate and collaborate with each other. For example, if they're within reasonable distance of each other, they could meet up once in a while, or they could even video game together. The second of three things that develops a team culture is the cultivation of internal responsibility. And this is done by having an understanding of the team's interconnectedness. In other words, when a team works on projects and each member's contribution is acknowledged, a feeling of internal responsibility develops, leading to that one for all, all for one attitude. The third and last thing that helps develop a team culture is the existence of a friendly, open, shared environment. This means an environment where members look for ways to empower each other through the giving of constructive feedback and the sharing of opinions without jumping to conclusions. Because seeing a teammate not do well should make no one happy. The main point is that the ideal virtual working environment should have a remote team culture. Without it, members may not value and support each other as well, which may lead to unfriendly competition, lower loyalty, and lower morale. Do you know what else leads to lower loyalty and lower morale? Management that changes nothing when its team goes from being physically present to being remotely present. When it comes to leading remote worker teams, management needs to be done properly or you'll be hit with low levels of productivity and happiness. That begins with embracing remote work on all levels and reshuffling or retraining management. Otherwise, the sweatshop typing pool mentality and the distrust of employees will persist remotely, according to Global Workspace Analytics. Therefore, when hiring highly qualified remote workers, proper management entails focusing on making sure that communicating is working rather than focusing on managing the employees themselves so that trust builds from both sides. Because having communication that doesn't work does the opposite. It sows distrust and, and indifference both of which can and do collapse businesses. Finally, going back to the first point on abandoning the sweatshop typing mentality, management should actively avoid remote worker exhaustion, regardless of whether it's related to work directly. The importance of this is highlighted in a study done by GFI Software, which found that more than two thirds of IT admins think about switching careers as a result of exhaustion. Considering many IT admins work remotely, this is a shocking statistic. I bet you're now asking, how can I avoid this at my company? Thankfully, there are several things you can do. For example, you can try to implement an unlimited vacation policy, give your remote employees mental health days, or even offer them memberships to exercise facilities. As for long-term engagement and productivity in general, there are certain things that only the company can do. One of the best ways for a company to increase remote employee engagement is for it to stage a team or total company retreat because there's an inherent value in seeing a real face. Let's talk about how this typically works and what its benefits are. First of all, one of the most basic benefits of company retreats is that by bringing everyone together, perceptions of each other are sure to change for the better. Remote workers will get to meet other teams and coworkers and see who is doing what it'll be as if meeting a pen pal for the first time ever. For teammates, this is sure to create a better working environment afterwards. Second of all, 
Meeting the executive and management team members personally to get a feel for who they are is a good way to build trust for all involved. Third, the benefit of company retreats is being able to take part in outdoor team building activities to not only increase overall brain productivity, but also promote camaraderie. To make things even sweeter for the remote employees, let them choose the location and let them plan other details of the trip. One example of a company that regularly does it this way is Buffer, which closed its physical offices in favor of operating only with distributed teams. Since they have over 80 members, their approach is to let them vote for locations, come up with activities, and even create the budget. So, a company retreat done like this is great because it's something everyone wants to do and it functions as a remote team building activity. That's two birds with one stone, as they say. That's all we have for you this time. Having covered everything about building a remote team culture, managing remote workers properly, and managing their productivity and engagement. Do you have any other tips you want to share with us about managing remote workers? If so, feel free to share them in the comments below. Since this is the fourth video of a series of five, you can find the previous three in the description below. And as always, don't forget, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already to get notified when the last video of our remote work series goes live. Thanks for watching.